Ireland, my Ireland, oh I'm coming home Though I roam, sure my heart never left her O'er the dark rolling sea, she is calling to me Oh I'm coming back home to Ireland Ced Mila Falta, 100,000 welcomes to Irish Paint Magic. Today we're going to Dublin, to the Phoenix Park. And before we go there, I want you to just listen to a few more emails I got in and um, letters and things um, about the programme. And it says, Hi David, I have just been watching your show on TV and really admire your work. It's fantastic. I would love the opportunity to go to one of your workshops at any workshop around uh, Ireland. Can you please let us know your plans for, for workshops in Ireland or anywhere? And it says, best regards, Donna McGee. Well, Donna, all I can say is look at the programme and you'll get all the information you want off of the programme. And this one is, dear Mr Willis, my mother has truly enjoyed your programme broadcast on TG Car, and has informed me of uh, supplies and has informed me of supplies on the website called Brinda's Art. I would be most grateful if you would forward the correct address to the website in that order and may I wish you all well in the studios. Uh, you can also get all that again on the, web, on the, the old programme. Brenda will have her own uh, phone number, etc. on that. Brenda's at supplies. And then I have one here. Uh, it's from Liz Stoll. It said, Mr Willis, we have been watching your TG car and have really programme and has really enjoyed the programme. Please show this email to TG car and ask them to show another series of you in the future. My children are nine and eight years old and are really glued to the programme. My daughter, Rosine, uh, said, you are better than Vincent van Gogh. My God, you're going to swell my head. And she is your biggest fan. We looked at your website and some of your paintings and we wish to purchase some. Where can we do so? Uh, Best wishes to the future and thanks for all the great painting lessons. And that's from Margaret O'Sullivan of Listol. Well, Margaret, all I can say is, again, look in at the programmes and you'll see the, the phone numbers and everything will be on that. All the information you want will be on the programme. So I want you to come with me now up here to my canvas, which is 24 inches by 18, which is the standard canvas that I always paint on anyway. It's a good, good size canvas for any wall in the house. Uh, over the fireplace or any wall, it fills the wall quite well. So straight away, what I've done here, I painted all this in with black gesso. All these are trees way inside in the woods of, um, there's a lot of woodland inside in the Phoenix Park here. And this is just black gesso now. All that, and I put a hairdryer on it and left it dry. That'll, the hairdryer will dry it in maybe a minute, and that's all you need to do. Down here, the same gesso, but I added a little bit of green onto it. And what we want to do is try to get the illusion of early in the morning in the Phoenix Park. So, straight away I'm going to go in with the two inch brush into liquid clear. And I'm going to cover the whole canvas with liquid clear. Now these brushes are not the same brushes that you'd buy in a hardware store. They're a special bristle, and they're specially made for this type of painting. And again, you can get all these supplies off the old uh, program. Don't be fooled by people trying to sell you another product. I've seen two-inch brushes in the shops for sale, and they're being told that, oh, they'll do, they'll do fine their two-inch brushes or their one-inch brushes. But the bristles are all wrong in them, and you're only, you're only snooping yourself. It's pretty well spread out now. So the whole canvas now will slip and will slide for the rest of the day. Now straight away I'm going to go into, um, I think I'll go into a little bit of green. I want this now to be very, very early in the morning. I don't want a whole lot of detail at all. So I'm going to green, I'm going to tone it down with black. I'm going to tone it down with black. This will actually be in silhouette actually, it won't be a bright painting at all. Oh, you'll see as we go along. And again now, I'm going to put a little bit of that aside and add more black to the other half of it, rather than be trying to blacken down the whole lot. We'll see then. Now, when you do this and mix the colours with the knife, don't look at the lump of paint that you're mixing. 
What you do is you come in under the paint, lift it off, and look at the color in here that's on the board, that's on the palette. Look at the color because that's where the color will be. And I can see that going a little bit now to the brown side and I'm gonna put a little bit of Van Dyke brown into it to brown it a little bit more. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a little bit of blue into it to make it mist away. If we want it to look like a mist, we'll do that. A little bit of blue. And again, now I'm lifting it off and looking in under it. I'm going to get another little bit of blue. Be careful that blue is very strong. You buy a tube of that, will do it the whole year, maybe more. No. It's coming quite good now. I'm going to leave it at that. There's a bluey tinge, bluey green tinge, and I'm looking right in here. So let's go up here and, and have a look at what we're going to do. I'm going to get the two inch brush, same two inch brush, and go into that color. I'm going to cover all the canvas with it. Cover all the canvas with it. Right down. Now the color is going into the liquid clear that's inside. Very little color. Down here. Yes, yeah, so we've got lots and lots of um, fans in Dublin. I just want to welcome them to the program and thank you for all the emails you send me. And I've had some nice experiences. I was in Dublin uh, a couple of months ago and I got lost and I went into, um, I don't know what area it was. I came down to traffic lights and I didn't know whether to go right or left. So I went into a local shoe shop and um, to ask for directions. And when I went in, the owner of the shop says to me, I know you, you're that guy from Cork that does the painting. He says, my wife is one of your best friends fans, so I got really a great thrill out of that and I want to thank her for supporting me and all the family and obviously he was looking at it as well because he recognised me when I went in. Also I went into a restaurant and when I went up to be served, self-service, the lady inside also recognised me and that was quite nice. So now I have all that, I'm going to clean the brush now and go down into the grill and clean the brush. Get all the surplus paint off and wipe it and then go down to this bucket, shake it in and belt the hell out of it. So now I want to get a, a little bit of blue into the background or a little bit of light and I'm going to pick up a little bit of titanium white, titanium white and going in there to those lighter areas. as though there's light coming up from behind the woods there. Lots of woodland now in the Phoenix Park. And that's the illusion we're trying to get inside there. I don't know, we'll just work at all, but if it doesn't, I'll run. I'll run the studio, I'm, I'm quite near the, the door of the studios and my bicycle is outside and I'll head for Cork. I borrowed my hands, hi Nelly bike to come up. <laughs> I have to go down the M50. They wanted to take money off of me coming up at the, the tolls on the M50. And they wanted to know how I got on with my bicycle. I taught them that the director of programs taught me I could go that way. So when they went in to check out about the director of programs, I slipped away nice and handy up the road. Now, I, these are vertical strokes I have going up here now to make it look that little bit hazy. All vertical strokes. I'm going in for a little bit more white now to go into to brighten up some of the areas there. Anyway, when I go home, they'll be waiting for me going down again through the toll. <laughs> I'll have to pay them double to get back. They don't like cockfellas sneaking through like that. Now again, 
I'm going to go right in to the light areas there. And actually I'm going to start taking off some paint now here by just rubbing that down where the trees would be in the background. And I'm not interfering as best I can with the lighter area. I just want to create the illusion of early in the morning when the first light peeps up down here. There again, I just get a, a filbert brush now and pick out some of those trees. I'm actually wiping off paint now rather than putting it on. I'm wiping it off. I want it to be hazy away there in the background. Here, here and here we'll put a few, we'll put on uh, some uh, trees proper. But here, I want these to be quite far back into the painting. So I'm actually taking paint off, and I suppose I could do it this way, with a tissue, just poke it down, take it off, so it still looks hazy. Whatever you do, don't tell anybody I showed you how to do this. Now I'm just going to change my brush to a fan brush. And again, I don't want, uh, I'm going to put in some grasses there. Maybe before I do that, I put a bit of a canopy up here by just, tap, by just tapping in here. There's a lot of foliage up there. I'm going to put in a little bit of the dark green now that I put in originally. Create a little bit of foliage up there. Up there in the canopy. Very gentle coming down. Talk to it. Very gentle. Now all these brush strokes are coming in from the left to the right, hanging down. And these ones will be coming from the right to the left, hanging down as well. Hanging down. My island, my island, oh I'm coming home. Ireland, my Ireland, oh, I'm All along. This is the fifth series of Irish Paint Magic. And thanks to all you people out there that keep asking for more. We're all delighted here in the studios. And TG Cahar, everybody, are very happy with the response from all over Ireland, north and south of the border. We have a big, big fan club above in, in, in the north of Ireland and we get huge response from them. I'm going back down here again now and I'm going to um, get my fan brush. I better show you what I'm going to do here. Just the fan brush, but I don't want this to be too bright, so a little bit of the darker colour and a bit of yellow ochre. Darker colour and that yellow ochre, but I don't want it to be bright at all. I'm going to put a little bit of sap green into it, just colour it slightly. No, that's fine. I'm going to tap in like that. And I'm going to push this, either push the brush up or you'll see or I tap it up. Whichever, whichever. I tap it upwards now because I just want to create the illusion way inside in the woods, look, that there's bits of growth, things like that, growing underneath there. Even some of that now is quite, quite bright yet. I don't want it to be too bright. I'm after dipping in out of some of the darker colour to tone it down a little bit. Inside in the woods you get all those little things. There's acres and acres of woodland in the Phoenix Park. I think it's the biggest enclosed park in Europe, as far as I know. I'm, I'm saying this off the top of my head now, so don't be writing and giving out to me and saying, oh, you've got your, all your figures. I think there's around 1,760 acres of enclosed park. That's some park. That's what I call a decent park. That's nearly as big as the, the gardens of the director, the director of programs, his back garden. 1,600 and 
I think 1,760 acres. Not bad. There's a few big houses in there as well. You'll all know where I'm talking about who's in there. This is just the illusion now that there's grasslands inside there, okay? Now I'm going to brighten it up a little bit now, a little bit. Not much. Again, there isn't much light there. So I'm going to start just putting in grasses all along there. I'm pushing actually up now with the, and I'm doing a lot of hitting and missing and not a whole lot at all. And again, there's not a whole lot of uh, detail because, as I said, this is very early in the morning. The sun is only just starting to come up and back in there. Now I'm going to go back to the darker colors again here as I'm coming down. And again, I'm pushing the old brush upwards here. Don't want a whole lot of detail at all. This you can do easy. Just push the brush up like that against itself. Like that. And you'll get all that broken area. Go right down to the canvas there now. All our grass is in there. And I go into uh, Van Dyke Brown. Maybe a little bit of black with it this time. I want it to be really dark. So Van Dyke Brown and black. And black. Really dark. Okay, so I come back up here. And um, I want to strengthen these trees here. These ones come right down here. And don't be afraid to lean on them. From there. And again, no detail. I'm using the fan brush now. It's pretty good for making these three trunks, you know. Pretty good. Let them fan out now at the bottom. And an awful lot of people, when they fan out the trees in the bottom, is they make the mistake that they, it's called tenting. They put tent out there. Don't do that. Be careful of that. Because down here, the, the tree has to get into the ground to hold it up while it matures and hold it against the wind and everything. Coming over here now to this side. And I go to down again, a big tree there. These ones now are starting to push the other trees back a bit. Big tree there, big one. This one is definitely two or three hundred years old. Down there. And I'd always recommend when you get a big tree that's two or three hundred years old, give it a hug. Put your arms around it, put your cheek up against it, and feel the energy. Give the tree a hug, and you'll be hugging, feeling history. There you go. Again, now there's not a whole lot of detail there. There's a few bits and pieces, maybe. I should, I don't want to overdo it. I want most of those to be in the background. But anyway, some of the most famous and oldest trees in the world are in the United States, redwood trees. I was in, where was I in? San Francisco, I think some years ago, and to this day I regret it. I, I could have crossed over, is it the Golden Gate Bridge? To, there's a special park over there, and I, I, I didn't go, and I was sorry after. Some of my friends went there, and they said they were fabulous trees, the oldest trees in the world. And I think the old producer may have some on record, and he showed them in the program if they are, some of those massive trees. 909 AD, the tree was born. Yeah, 909 AD? Yes. 1100 was the building of, building of dwellings at Mesa Verde. This section, the Aztecs began construction of Mexico. This section, Columbus sails to America. The Declaration of Independence. And in 1930, the tree fell. They can tell the history of the United States. And some of these here in, in the Phoenix Park now can tell you the history of Ireland. Without um, going to any great trouble 
They have been living there, living and experiencing and watching history as it happened in Ireland. So the Phoenix Park is a very, very historical area. I'm just going to go back to the, um, to the knife here. And I don't want any bright colours, so I'm going to keep the colours quite dark. Yellow ochre there, and I'm going to put even some of that green into it to darken it down. Just the little bit of light might peep through some of those trees there. So I'm going to go in and take a, a roll of paint off it. There you go. Just there. Maybe some of these now, might not. So I don't want them at all to be bright. Ah, that's better. I gone to the brown side now, and the reason I had to, I went to the green side and it wasn't contrasting proper. Yeah? For me against the, uh, against the background. I just let it tap up and down there. And again, up and down. Just let the canvas take, the canvas will take the paint off the knife. Speak to it, talk to it. Say, come on, Mr. Canvas, down there. There, over to the other side. At this side, the light would catch some of this side of the tree. And again, let the canvas take it off for you. Thank you very much. I don't want to go to ones in the background. I keep away from them. This side here, this tree, up along here, where the light would just catch the corner of it. Now, there's some very, very um, important people living up here in the Phoenix Park. Special lady. Arison Uteran is up there. Our president lives there. So the director of programs has asked me to announce anybody that want to call for a cup of tea or anything, they're quite welcome to call there. Just don't mention my name, just mention Paul's, the director of programs. Now, I want you to come up here a little bit first, a bit closer to me here. I have inside in the Phoenix Park is well known for deer, and I have some deer in there. I've there for a couple of hundred years, 150, 180 years now, I think, if I can find them, but they're in there all right. And again, now, these will be in silhouette, they'll be very dark. I'll pull him off. There's one little laddie, and he has a few more friends in there. I want you to be quiet now, we don't want to frighten them. Shh. And again now, pull him off. Yeah, we have some wonderful deer heads in Ireland. I don't know who, but there was, uh, uh, the, the, I think, uh, the uh, there was uh, the wife of uh, the American ambassador some years ago named a house in the Phoenix Park, not the Arison Otrana, but the ambassador's, uh, American ambassador's house after the deer, I think. She called the, the name of the house, I don't know what it is now, but she called them after the deer because of the amount of deer inside in the Phoenix Park. Just cleaning up all these now. I'm not cleaning up completely. I want them to be way there, but I want that little bit of light coming through there to show them contrasting against the background. This guy is alert now, he's after spotting me. I just see the head up, he's his head up high, he's after spotting something, he's after hearing me. Did they tell me you could hear me in the next parish, I don't know. Well, I see he's after sticking up his head now, he's inquisitive, he knows there's something going on out there. Wonderful heads of there in Killarney National Park. Often when I'm fishing there, I often see them come across when I'm drifting in the boat. They come down there to drink. And in the summer, they come down and stand in the water, in the reed beds, over there by the Gulf. I, but I was told that just to keep them. They don't have sweat bends. I don't know if this is true or not now, but I was told they don't have sweat bends and that they, they go in to cool themselves down in the water. They stand inside like statues in the reed beds. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's what I was told. Now, I'm going to go back in here and just pull in front of those guys there, look. Small bit. No, no detail. No detail. And for God's sake, Dave, will you be quiet because you'll frighten them. 
I think it was their park house, that lady, that the ambassador, American ambassador was back. I think that was back in the 70s. 1970, I think, of the house after the deer in the park. But imagine all those areas open free of charge, 1,700 acres inside in the heart of Dublin. What a wonderful park. Pushing this back, shove the trees back. Get back, please, Mr. Tree. Back there, please. Thank you. And I'm going to leave it go at that. So that's just an exercise to show you a little bit of silhouette. Bring a little bit of the heart of Dublin, the heart of Ireland, that all these facilities are available. So I'm going to leave it at that. So to all the people in Dublin that watch the programme, my sincere thanks to each and every one of you. Gormila Mahagod, Shlan Lat, and God bless you all, my friends. Ireland, my Ireland, oh, I'm coming home. Though I roam, sure my heart never left her. All the time.